if you haven't told a client beforehand that you're gonna be doing a procedure or you're gonna be running a test, you're really not in, you're on shaky ground when you then try to come to charge them later on and most clients are gonna get upset about that. Then blood tests and medications and things like that, we've billed all of those on a monthly cycle and so those costs are coming into us constantly. And so if we don't charge for that, not only are we not making any profit, we're actually losing money because we have to pay for the blood test even if it wasn't charged for. The classic one for that is running some blood tests and either not having discussed it with the client or forgetting to charge for it. So our external blood tests for a general wellness profile cost the clients about $110. Now most practices, if they're being run well, will be making a profit of 10 to $15 on every $100 they earn. So that means if you don't charge for one lot of blood test, the next nine consults or $900 procedures you do are making no money whatsoever. And that's gonna have a really bad effect on the practice. So if you're lacking that um, $10 for the next nine jobs, $100 type jobs, what would that $10 actually be used for if you had it in the practice? Yeah, so generally it's going to either be used for, for staff compensation, so the next year we look at increasing everybody's wage, or it's going to be looking at, at reinvestment. So the, the classic is the expensive things that we need to do good medicine. So our x-ray machine, we run a digital system, and on its own that's $60,000 to purchase just for the, the reading machine regardless of the x-ray generator. Um, and that's gonna fall over in another two or three years. So we need to be able to provide for that. We'd really like to, we've got an excellent ultrasound machine, but we'd really like to be able to provide endoscopy. And that's the sort of things that we reinvest that money in. It's, it's not about take home for me, it's reinvestment in, in good medicine. Mm. Let's talk about the knock-on effect too of, of these missed charges. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about how much that mounts up to in a year? The average veterinarian undercharges by about $100 a day at least. And so that means each week they're undercharging by $500. Given that they're all going to work close to 50, hours, uh, 50 weeks a year, they're going to undercharge by about $26,000 a year. And that's every vet in the practice straight off the bat. Um, that's from not putting it in the computer correctly or giving a medication and forgetting to charge for it. If you add discounting on top of that, it starts to increase really quickly. So if you're in a two or three vet practice, that can be anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000 a year. And that's either money that can be paid to an extra staff member or can go back into compensation for the current staff. And what you'll find then is that because the practice can't afford to pay all their staff, they don't have as many staff and so you run harder. And the, the more you're working, the more charges you miss. And it becomes this snowballing effect where you're overwhelmed all the time you're not charging out properly because you're too busy. But the busier you are, the harder it is to keep a handle on your charges. That's what we find in practice. It escalates every year. So if the practice doesn't make very much money that year, they're not gonna hand out very much in, in pay rises. Already said how, how vets are the, the most poorly compensated professionals. Um, and that will continue to happen as, as long as we're bad at charging and we don't understand the business. If you want to successfully stay in practice and be able to have a good work-life balance and be compensated fairly for the time you spend in practice, then you need to be charging accurately.